Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Uh, welcome to probably the last episode of Oops, there we go, of Honest Hearts. Ah, give me all. That's every survivalist cachet. I uh, ran around off screen looking for him. I found one of these. I've got to say, this looks pretty fantastic besides my gross face. So now, all we're doing is getting the hell out of here and going to go do some side quests. And by side quests, I really mean loyalty quests. We're kind of basically out of them, right? Going to the dead horses. What can I, tell you? I talked to Joshua about your thoughts on civilization. Hmm. Oh, so this is a lie on what Joshua said. He said it has a hard time being objective. He said he has a hard time being objective at the whole idea, and that I should give you advice. He said that? Well, I guess you have been out there more recently than he has. So, what's your advice? Huh. <sighs> Man. I don't know. I always gotta I always gotta stick with this one, right? You know? Choose for yourself, not what tradition shows for you. Civilization isn't perfect, but neither is tribal life. You should go and see it for yourself. Really? You think so? Whew. I'm going to do it. After all this is over, I'm going to go explore civilization. Dankney, Akis. I never would have had the grounds to ask him myself. Dankney is his way of saying thank you, which is like the uh, German Danke. Yeah, I did it. This is only one of these levels, though. Oh, uh, well. Um, hold on. Okay. I'm not very sneaky. Hmm. I could try to get my science up. Actually, let's do that. We're going to be getting into combats here and there, so. Wagon Cloud. Wagon Cloud. About your husband. He was killed by white legs during the evacuation. What? No. You must be mistaken. Daniel would have told me. I'm afraid so. Daniel kept it from you because he thought the grief would distract you. How? How dare he? What gives him the right? I thought Daniel was my friend, but he cares nothing for the sorrows. He was only doing what he thought was best for the tribe. It wasn't an easy choice for him. Perhaps. I will have to have a very long talk with Daniel when all of this is over. Thank you for telling me this truth. All right. If something of mine will help. Ah, oh, crap. Well, that's a uh, that's unfortunate. Okay. So I've decided we're going to quote crush the white legs and quote. That is what it is referred to in the game uh terminology. You can choose to uh be a little more peaceful towards them, but I'm just going to get all violent like, you know. Oh yeah, I found another cowboy repeater and I thought it was a message from God. I 
All right, well. So I'm going to beat the DLC like this. Nah. I'm going to take a little break, break on recording, and I'm going to do some shenanigans, and then we're going to catch up on quests. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. All right. Wait, what? Did I give her all of my... No, I... Okay, weird. Let's uh, let's get going then. Going all the way up here. To Half Mouse Cave. So, um, I've got something I intend to, mm, dear. See, I'm gonna have to be constantly drunk or uh, on Bighorn Steak for the entire rest of this DLC, and I'm not even sure if that's gonna be enough. What I need is the ability to carry more stuff, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get enough. Hey. Where is Danny? Oh, boy. And it's raining and dark, too. I wonder if... There's a mod that makes it so... Probably, but... I wonder if there's a mod that makes it so rain and other weather effects are, like, bad and shit. There probably is. It probably scales with the, uh... Survival skill. That would make sense, right? Oh, he's not even in here. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Well, maybe we can hop up here and steal, I mean, help ourselves. Oh, yeah, I need Big Horner. Look, I need this just as much as you guys, if not more. In fact, I do need it more. My kitties are crying because they want food. But it is not their dinner time yet, so they will have to wait. Unfortunately for their little... Their sad little souls. What vineyards, by the way? Also, I was going to say that it's supposed to be vineyards, but I guess that's probably just meant to be that... Uh, change of language over time that uh, we don't get enough of in Fallout. God, where the hell is Daniel then? Should I just wait? I just got another bighorn steak, so I can and I will wait. Let's wait for two hours. That should put us to 7 a.m. Oh yeah, I can put these on. They don't do anything, but they make me feel better. I'm not sure if it's the fan that you can hear or my cat, but something's peaking my audio. I hope it's the cat, because then that's cute. You know, kind of. I have a craving for something, but I'm not sure what. There you are, you son of a gun. I'm glad to see you're still with us. How can I help you? I checked on everything in the valley and got to the map of the Grand Staircase. I appreciate that. Well, that's it. This is all we need. Now all that's left is to quietly pack up and try to get out of here without being noticed. That's assuming yeah. that Joshua won't try to stop me. I know he hasn't talked you into fighting the White Lords despite what I've said. Don't worry, I don't hold it against you. You're a... an outsider. Fighting seems like the practical solution. I'll tell you again. There's more at stake. Oh boy. Okay. Whether you decide whether the Saurus should fight or flee, your decision will set their destiny in motion. You'll be unable to finish any more ending quests, so choose wisely. I think Joshua's right. 
I think we should fight the white legs. No. Why? Why? Haven't you seen enough of what's going on here to see that the sorrows don't need to butcher the white legs for a piece of land? What Joshua wants is more than an attack. He wants a slaughter. And he needs more than you and the dead horses to do it. The sorrows can't be pushed into this. You and Joshua don't have the right to force them into it. Please consider what I'm saying. And you have the right to pull them off their land? I've already explained to them that we're leaving. They've accepted it. What is Joshua going to tell them about being a warrior? What are you going to tell them about how to live with themselves after they got lost in the moment? Killed someone who didn't deserve to die? Or does that not matter? Is that just an acceptable consequence if it means holding on to this valley? Maybe there is no place left in this world for mercy. But even if it tramples me into the dust, I will never accept it. And I will never condone it. Joshua must be waiting for you. I'll stay here with the others as I told them I would. Oh, shit. All right, I guess I'm going to be encumbered for the rest of this. I know Daniel doesn't approve, but destroying the White Legs is the only way to ensure the sorrows can remain in Zion. You and I will lead a group of dead horse warriors and sorrows hunters into three Marys from this position. Our objective is to find the White Legs leader, salt upon wounds, and prevent him from fleeing. Show no quarter to the White Legs we come across. Make no mistake about why we are here. This is an extermination. Are we as the baddies? All right, let's do it. Joshua Graham has given me the way of the Canaanite perk. Nerf banks. Nerf banks. Can he do that? The time for talk is past. The Lord. Oh, God. All right. I guess I'm going to go all the way encumbered. Would this not have happened if I had been, uh, you know, someone else? Because I understand that Waking Cloud would have left because it's a whole thing with, you know, her tribe not wanting to be like that. But, you know, maybe it's because of a, maybe if I had had a, um, oh, Lord, I've forgotten his name. What is his name? Well, anyway, uh, yeah, this is how the DLC ends. Sluggishly. Oh, fuck. Come on. Yeah, I know I'm over in Coburn and I can't run. Jeez, I hit that quick save maybe 30 seconds ago. Uh, I, I kind of planned to at one point have a moment like this where I was over in Cumberland and leaving the DLC. I didn't plan for it to happen now. That's uh, That's unfortunate. However, I did plan for this, so let me grab my iPad and I will uh, talk about some stuff I intended to talk about. All right. So this... Oh, is it go time? Am I hitting Mr. Graham there? Maybe I can snipe a little bit. See, now this is just embarrassing. I may as well loot everything off their body because it's not like they're gonna weigh me down more. Yep. Okay. All right. Do do do. Here we go. A uh, developer quotes. So this is a question that was asked to uh, that J.E. Sawyer guy. I keep referencing. He answered this on his Tumblr uh, back when that wasn't a like pile of ash. 
Uh, this is the question. I keep seeing this criticism on Tumblr that attacks the Honest Hearts DLC for, quote, using natives as an aesthetic, unquote. And it suffered from, quote, white savior syndrome, unquote. I am not going to offer my own opinion on this, but I'm curious as to what you think about all of that, seeing as you did some writing for the DLC. And uh, J.E. Sawyer responds with, oh, hold on. Anyway, bear that in mind. We're currently battling white savior syndrome. Is that it? Oh my goodness. Come here, you bastards. Anyway, yeah, that was a question that someone asked um, on the topic of Honest Hearts. And if the game uses White Savior Syndrome or not. Oh no, you lit Joshua Graham on fire. How will he ever recover from this? So I mentioned this um, episodes ago, but in fact, Joshua Graham does not have the ability to pistol whip people because that isn't in this game. Uh, so what he does do is, this is hilarious. There are two versions of that gun in his inventory. It's called a light shining in darkness. Uh, it's one of the best guns in the game. But yeah, there's two versions of that gun in his inventory. One of them is a melee weapon that he swings with. The other is a gun that he shoots. So he just switches between them. Anyway. Uh, so this is what J.E. Sawyer said. I understand why people see it that way, but how the DLC shipped was not how it was planned. The tribes in Zion are descendants of a mix of North American native people as well as other American citizens uh, of European and various non-native ethnicities, uh, tourists and campers. This survives in the language of the dead horse, for example, which uses a large number of German derived words. So I pointed that out earlier where um, they say thank you as in like dank, which is, you know, the German danke, you know, danke schön, danke schön, danke schön. Uh, in the first design document for Honest Hearts, each tribe, every tribe was supposed to have members from all of the Fallout 3 slash New Vegas ethnic groups. Uh, however, there was a complicating factor, the body art. The various tattoos and paints we needed to texture the bodies multiplied the number of required textures. Since that is a texture for a person, so it goes on their skin. So if they have a different skin color, you need a different texture. So the game's defaults are, I believe, um, I'm not sure if this is the language they use, but it's, Asian, African American, Hispanic, and Caucasian. Um, having unique body paints for all of those multiplies it by four. But if every single uh, tribe is one race, what? What happened? Wait, did they kill him? No, go ahead. Take me out. Take me out. Yeah, that's not going to happen. What happened to him? Who the hell killed Joshua Graham? Okay, he's with me. Okay, I'll make another save here. Now, this is before that last fight because I have... Oh my god, this is all the way back here. This is when I hit that quick save button. I hope everyone is getting what they expected out of this Honest Hearts DLC playthrough. Anyway. Uh, body art. They can't be layered as they could in Fallout 4, but, we, but they were entirely new textures that increased the amount of texture memory being used. For that reason, each tribe wound up having only one body texture per sex. This compressed their ethnicities into homogenized blends, with dead horses being a darker tan, Sorrow is a light tan, and white legs, under the body paint, pale. Uh, at a minor, as a minor point, Daniel was supposed to be, and in data, was, for most of the development, Asian. I don't know when, how, or why he was switched to Caucasian. And I had to just give me a second here. Oh, wait, I know. Oh, boy, this is just silly.
Now, this would be perfect if Joshua Graham would say something silly right now. There we go. This is this is so goofy. Right, come on out of that drink there, Graham. I guess I won't take the shit with me. Yeah, you can see it. So he actually holds the gun backwards to pistol whip. I wonder why I randomly got quest, uh, Chaos and Zion. Okay. Uh, it's frustrating. Or sorry. So, yeah. The, he explained that um, Danny was supposed to be Asian, got switched to Caucasian at some point, and he doesn't know when, and he doesn't know why, and that's how it ended up shipping. It's frustrating because those changes slot Joshua and Daniel as white guys among mostly brown folk when, one, there weren't supposed to be any white guy they weren't supposed to be white guys and two the tribes uh, were specifically called out as ethnically and culturally mixed without any real world analogs okay hopefully that uh, me trying to read that didn't ruin this come on tussle with me yeah this I'm think I'm not I'm uh, I'm suspecting that that isn't going to work. So he does take damage. The uh the poison here must be uh um eaten away at him. Actually, let me switch out to one of these. Jeez, oh, Pete. Oh, boy. Working my way to Joshua Graham. I feel like Daniel... Uh, Daniel is kind of a shame, you know? Because, like, no matter what, he isn't Joshua Graham. Joshua's pistol weapon. Nice. The time for talk is past. The Lord's work must be done. We can't expect God to do all the work. Oh wow. That's fantastic. So yeah, this um this gives me this makes me feel a little more positive about the development of this game because obviously the people involved aren't like weird about it. Uh, regarding the natives as aesthetic criticism, oh, you can see Robert playing Devil May Cry. Uh, regarding the natives of aesthetic criticism, the patterns we use in Three Tribes body art are not based on any current or historical native body art. Uh, as far as I know, I think that. Yeah, that's what that means. There are in-fiction explanations for each tribe's specific choices. The White Legs initially color themselves white to blend with the Great Salt Lake, where they're from, and they dread their hair out of reverence for Ulysses, who is another character from one of the other DLCs. However, um, they don't understand the reason why Ulysses dreads his hair. Ulysses um, is a black guy, and I'm not sh Oh, fuck, I can't remember enough of his lore right now. Um, but he does know a lot of shit about pre-war stuff. So they just kind of appropriated it from him without actually knowing. Uh, the sorrows in the river pattern, the sorrows use the river pattern to reflect their suffering and their connection to the Virgin River in Zion. And the dead horses mark various accomplishments on their skin and decorate their clubs with 45 shells out of respect for Joshua Graham. Okay. Uh, and then there was another question that I intended to read. However, we are coming up on the thing where Joshua apparently died. I can't believe they... Is there a different way to get ammunition for this thing? Because the amount that you get is criminally low. 
Like I used it because I assumed I was going to find more, but nah, it turns out that I'm basically just shooting magnum rounds at, you know, pigeons. I'm aware that it doesn't fire magnum shells. That's reference to Resident Evil, where the magnum is usually the best uh, gun in the game. Okay, well, let's do a little savey save here. Oh, that's probably what killed him. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, hmm. Man, wouldn't it be funny if I... Wouldn't it be funny if I used so much ammo and healing items that I ended up being not over encumbered by the time I got to the end? And I... Th What's that guy's fucking name? I knew him in high school, but I can't even remember his name now. But he's playing Among Us. Anyway, there was another question that uh, got asked and I was interested by it, but... Yep, Joshua's dead. Okay, well, let's fight uh, Plasma with Frag. Oh, shit. Catch, motherfucker. And then I'll get this War Club out. Yeah, you can have some. I wonder if the... Um Strenuous grunt, says Joshua. So you can see that the body paint that the white legs use is meant to be salt. And when we equip their shit, we don't get the uh, the paint. We just get the, the armor part of it. Wow, that is a good feeling gun. Okay. Much better. Much, much better. I wish um, healing limb damage was a little easier. That's, uh, that's a complaint I have. All right. I actually do want this guy's stuff. I'm not just collecting it just for the sake of collecting it because, uh, boy, do I need to repair this piece of shit. It's a good gun, but God damn it. It had the absolute balls kicked out of it. All righty. And then we had another uh, question and answer from the uh, the big guy. Uh, looking back, is there anything you would have changed regarding the tribalist at XUs and the follow-up work you've done? Uh, and then they have a uh, apology because Tumblr was being fucky as it is. Uh, yes, I've said this since Honest Hearts came out, but the tribes in that DLC were not meant to look ethnically Native American. They're supposed to be descendants of broad cross-section of Americans of different ethnic backgrounds, including Native American and European tourists. Uh, in my own twip, trips to the American Southwest, I've encountered many French, Swiss, Swiss Dutch, and German tourists. Um, we had prepared different sin colors to show that breath, but we found that when it was combined with body art, which was intentionally not based on any North American, Native American body art designs, we blew up the texture memory, which was already really limited on the PS3, the solution was to have one skin tone, a mid-tone, which had the obvious unfortunate side effect of making them all look Native American. I think the naming and speech patterns could have used another pass to avoid falling into negative tropes. I said this before, but Daniel was supposed to be Asian, but for whatever reason, his data was switched to Caucasian, which in that engine automatically flips a bunch of face and skin data. This was again done to avoid having it be two white guys saving Native Americans, but that's what it looked like in execution. The core plot of Ovenous Hearts was based on Lawrence of Arabia and the mission. I think it cleaves too tightly to the inspirational material in making the outsiders be the main drivers of the native group's destinies. As a result, the native groups feel sidelined in importance and voice. Uh, finally, I think involving Native American consultants, especially from the American Southwest, uh, at some stage would have been a good idea. And that, by the way, is an excellent recommendation. If you're making something and it involves a culture or something 
kind of inspired or based off of a culture that you don't know, fucking ask somebody for the love of God. Okay, I'm going to do a hard save here. And then at some point, I imagine I'm going to have to uh, stop the recording so I can finish walking the rest of the way there. Because I don't want to drop any of the shit I have. All right. Uh, I take responsibility for the bad representation in Honest Hearts. I think we did a better job in Dead Fire because we asked Asian devs within the studio to look at the Huana and Rat Rautai uh, characters and their representation. But we should have also hired some Maori consultants specifically to look at the Huana. The Huana are really Maori, just like the Rautai. I don't know this game. Dead Fire? Uh, just like they aren't really Japanese. But even a fictional culture that's only inspired by a mix of real world cultures can get uncomfortable or into outright bad territory. He has a uh, final statement regarding that Dead Fire game, which I should look into because I like this writer. I love that he's like, yeah, uh, they said that uh, they uh, couldn't fit it in the game. There's been a lot of complaints about the development of this game. Some people blame Obsidian, which I'm not sure is fair. But the thing is, Obsidian has a habit of uh, making games that they don't have the ability to finish. I mentioned this uh, because... So... What's a good example? So I know. Uh, in KOTOR... Obsidian made KOTOR, right? Uh, Bioware made the first KOTOR. And they were unable to work on the second KOTOR because I think they were either working on Jade Empire. I think it was Jade Empire. Um, although it might have even been... I think it was too early for them to be working on Dragon Age or Mass Effect. So I don't think it was either of those. But yeah, they were working on Jade Empire... But they were like, hey, these guys are good. Do you want to... Do you want... Like, we'll recommend them to you. We think that they're great. Uh, you know, they come with our recommendation for developing KOTOR 2, you know, because we can't. And that was why Obsidian got tapped for KOTOR 2, even though the first was made by Bioware. Uh, this led to a bunch of problems. Primarily ones involving the bugginess of the game. Uh, it shares a few writers. It shares, um, Chris Avalone is his name. Uh, he wrote for both this game and KOTOR 2. Anyway, yeah, so he wrote for this game and for KOTOR 2. And uh, boy, does KOTOR 2 have some issues. I think it's a fantastic game, but the thing is, uh, in terms of its story and gameplay, it uh, it's not finished. Like, straight up, it isn't finished. And the only real way to really play KOTOR 2 is to download the patch, which makes it so... You can actually play the game. These guys, I swear. Wait, maybe I can... Nope, not yet. It's like the water is just absorbing the shot completely. That's not how water works. All right. Well, what about one of these? I'm sure the water won't put out the fire, right? Okay, did I get him? I have no idea. Okay, I guess I did. Anyway, 
Obsidian made KOTOR 2, and I think KOTOR 2 is, in fact, better than the first. However, um, KOTOR 2 has issues. Game ain't finished, straight up. Um, a good, like, 20% of that game is cut when it was supposed to be playable. And uh, that's just, uh, ooh, you know? But um, some people blame Obsidian for that. But the thing is, they were only given 18 months to, t uh, to make that game. And that included QA, quality assurance. Uh, you know, testing the game to make sure it even works. And the less you test a game, the higher a chance that bugs can find their way in. How far do I have to go? Oh man. Well I knew what I was I knew what I was signing up for. Like I figured that this is gonna happen from the start of the DLC till now. I wish I could buy and sell shit from Joshua. That'd be useful. Anyway, um, so yeah, people aren't sure really where to point fingers there because it could be that Obsidian was like, yeah, sure, we can do that in 18 months. You know, we don't even have to make the engine, uh, even though they definitely, definitely should have, you know, they should have asked for more time or shouldn't have agreed to it with such a small amount of time. But the thing is, that's done. You know, that game is done. It's not you know, great in its state, but if you mod it to the point where it's playable, it is still a really solid game. As for, um, as for Obsidian themselves, maybe they were just under contract to finish the game and then were told that it would take, uh, they had to do it in 18 months, which is some underhanded shit. And not cool, but that might have been what the deal was. Which would have just been unfortunate for them. Um, so, and the thing is, whenever it happens, it usually happens because they're contracted by some big, like, super business like LucasArts. And holy shit, like, LucasArts in the 2000s? Uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty big. They were pretty sizable. What am I looking at here? Oh. I should probably tell Joshua to switch back to normal mode. So yeah, anyway, what I'm getting at is that it isn't clear what the deal with uh, Obsidian is in that instance. Um, but the same thing happened uh, a couple of years later. Bethesda was like, hey, we just finished um, Fallout 3. We've heard good things about you. We want a, fall a Fallout spinoff. Will you make it? You have two years. And that's what we're playing now. So... Bethesda, another big super company with a lot of questionable decisions, especially here, you know? Like, I would say de questionable decisions started sometime after Oblivion, maybe? Because Oblivion is fine. Morrowind is fine. But the uh, Oblivion horse armor DLC is questionable, you know? That's where, uh, that's where I'm not so sure. And then after that is Fallout 3, which has a questionable story. And Skyrim, which is a fantastic game, but boy, does it have some fucking problems. So I'm thinking that, you know, in this time, they're starting to get a little odd and, you know, not great with their game design shit. And 
And so they asked this uh, company that they can freely scapegoat, will you make our game? And so here we are. So it could just be a case of like, hey, they only gave us this much and it's fucking Fallout. But it could have also been a case of Oblivion where it's just like, yeah, sure, we'll take that. You know, if you guys are going to fight Melee, will you at least get in here so I can fight you, you know, with Melee? Great, I'm crippled too. All right, I don't think I'm going to catch up to him, so. Actually, no, this is a dumb idea. Let's do some of this, right? So another weird thing about um, Fallout New Vegas, specifically when it comes to Obsidian, is that Originally, Fallout was owned by a company called Interplay, I believe. And all those people who made... And Interplay closed down. Which is why, you know, you haven't heard of it if, you know, you haven't heard of it. It's because the whole company closed down. There we go. There you go. See, Interplay is gone. Interplay doesn't exist anymore. But Bethesda bought Fallout because Fallout's kind of hot shit, you know? And that's why they made Fallout 3. Uh, and that's why a lot of people haven't even heard of Fallout 1 and 2, because Bethesda kind of wants those buried, because they didn't make them. But the thing is, uh, a lot of Interplay devs went to a company called Obsidian, which then made Fallout New Vegas. So New Vegas is kind of a weird case because it's a game where people who lost the rights to their game got a chance to make it again somehow so you know there's that but yeah I still don't know what the deal is three Marys that's where we're heading yeah, J.E. Sawyer's um, discussion and, you know, fairly frank observation of the game and its development make me feel that Bethesda is more to blame. But then again, this is a thing that has happened multiple times for Obsidian where, you know, they've been given a game and, you know, don't give it enough time and development. But the thing is, it could just be that it's happened more than once. And like, that'd be crazy. Stranger things have happened. Trail carbine. I don't know if I've even seen one of those before. Yeah, we need, I really need to get the jury rigging perk. Wait, don't I have a perk that makes me run quicker when I'm... Wearing light? Yep, I do. Damn. Guess I'm not wearing that anymore. I think there's something in the sink that can help me remap that, though, so... I make reference there to Old World Blues, uh, one of the other DLCs for this game. Oh, boy. What does this thing take, the Trail Carbine? I want to I wanna see it. It takes 44 mags, huh? It looks just like a crappy hunting rifle. I'll use it for a bit. Actually, I'm going to have to take a little break soon, and that may as well be now. So I'll see you guys in a bit. After a lot more uh, walking through here, we've reached this point. And uh, boy, did it take a while.
Three Marys. That guy, that guy has had the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, why not take the toaster? So if we look at this, we can see that it has a uh, little of a garbage can um, and some other tin can stuck to it. Mr. Graham probably wants me to talk. The time for talk is past. All right, never mind. Do I see a dead guy there? I do. I noticed that the mouse was stuck on my screen, but then left, which is uh, odd. It's probably a little buggy because the game uh, is like, no, you can't talk to your, your guy. You just can't right now. Looks like we're out of time. Boo me. I put the code back on because I really didn't care that I was going to be running a little slower. I really should have checked what uh what clothes are what in the system. Cuz as everyone knows, the NCR shit is some of the best. I mean god, they put it on the box art. Uh, Mr. Graham? Naturally. Just shoot him, okay? It'll it'll go a lot better that way, I feel. So, uh, because I'm recording my, uh, I haven't started on dinner yet. My wife's coming home. God, Joshua Graham is kind of creepy sometimes. <laughs> I imagine that's probably his appeal. I mean, fuck, people love uh, Volpas. I mean, Christ, people, sh uh, people simp for Caesar's Legion for, like, two characters. Like, it's not that they like Caesar's Legion or even agree with it. It's just... One of them likes... Uh, it's just that some of them like Volpas and some of them like uh, Kaisar. Six hundred pounds. All right. Do you die if you get to three hundred pounds, or, or uh, uh, a thousand pounds rather? Is there a pickaxe stuck in this wall? That's funny. It's too early for a Minecraft reference, right? Because Skyrim has that notched pickaxe thing. And I would say how awkward for them to have a uh, a reference that is retroactively a reference to a uh, a turf. But then I realized I don't think Notch is even a feminist at all. I think he just uh, hates people who aren't white men. For those who don't know, the uh, guy who originally stole Minecraft from the game Infiniminer, Notch, that guy. Uh, yeah, horrible, horrible guy. Is this a is that a cutscene? This is taking too long. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding, it's taking too long. God willing, we will finish this together. <laughs> this is taking too long. Yeah, sure. Give me that. Oh, he just gave me a 45 auto. Nice. Well, that's probably a good time to uh, hit. It's probably a good time to stop recording again. Hey, gang. Um, well, we're back. Uh, I just hit level twenty, so I'm going to put some points into some stuff, and then we're going to get on with the DLC. Um, thus far, y'all haven't missed much. I went through a cave that was kind of it now I do kind of want to take strong back because I'll need it later but on the other hand I'm kind of tempted to also get something else 
Hmm. Yeah, because I did want Jerry Riggin. So, why not? Now, I should be able to repair anything with anything, right? Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, I got cracked out by one of those guys. And yes, I have decided that I will beat this DLC over Encumbered. Because I'm greedy. I want my goodies. No matter what it takes. I worked hard to steal all those things. Ain't no way someone's going to just take them back. So I don't think I actually ever followed up on this, but... um. Hey, Sawyer mentioned that uh, I think Maori people reached out to him and uh, commented positively on the representation in that game he mentioned. I believe it was Deadfire. Yeah, I think uh, my last tangent was in the middle of um, me talking about how Notch is a uh, transphobe. And like, I guess just like a woman phobe, right? So how much further do I have to go? Oh my goodness gracious. I'm doing this to myself, of course. The only reason that I'm rushing is because I can't activate console commands. Uh, since I'm trying to get achievements here and my bedtime's coming up. Not that like I need a bedtime, but I've been trying to be a little more consistent with my sleep. So bedtime it is, right? Uh. Let's take a uh, poultice here. Let's take one of those and then a poultice. Well, actually, I'll hold on to that in case I need it in the middle of the boss fight. I will much prefer having one of those. Now, did that restore my limb? And didn't. Great. Well, I'm probably going to play Old World, uh, Old World Blues next because I like it. I might even save dead money for last. I know that you're really, really supposed to play honest or no, um, a uh, lonely road or lonesome road last, but I might just play, uh, dead money last because dead money is really hard. <laughs> it's harder than all the other ones. I think for the level that you can access dead money. Also, as opposed to this DLC where you can only bring in a certain amount of stuff, uh, you started that DLC with uh, nothing, as far as I remember. Is that a shish kebab? What is that weapon called? Press S for stim pack. I can't remember what crippling the torso does to anyone. Oh, Jesus. Well, that was a, a good time for... Uh, 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 yep. And uh, one of these. And uh, that. Come on, I'm practically indestructible. Devil. Bring it. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I like this. This is a lot of fun. Oh, fuck. I should have had a... Uh, 
I should have had a melee build from the start. That's fantastic. My wife um, might play this, and I'm definitely going to uh, imply to her that she would be very happy with a melee build. Yeah. Because I'm enjoying the shit out of this. And in... um, What is it? This this game mode that I'm in. Hardcore mode. Um, In hardcore mode, ammo takes weight. But that's not so when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to the goodies. Uh, uh, melee weapons. Seeing as they ain't got no ammo to begin with. So uh, it's been a couple hours since my last uh, play. Uh, my wife came home, as I anticipated, mostly because, you know, she always does that. Uh, I cooked some dinner, as is my job. Yeah, I'm just taking trash now. I'm not going to get any more over encumbered, so why bother, right? Who cares? Can't believe that squirrel on a stick, which is cooked food, irradiates you, but spore carrier pod doesn't. Yeah, let's wait here. The stars are beautiful, but yeah, I want the sun to be up. I want to be able to finish this DLC in daylight. God. Holy shit. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, so sneering imperialist makes you weaponize racism? We're gonna kill you, but not like this. Defend yourself. You got no Niku for me. They are you. That's it. Prepare to so, um, if you tell Joshua to kill that, to kill that guy. He unloads the whole clip into him. <laughs> Do this Joshua style. What is that thing he's got? Salt upon wounds power fist. Wow. So, so um, white legs actually are pretty consistent across their uh, across themselves and having a bunch of. God, he's so freaking weird sometimes. Is he going to pour me? Oh, good. Oh. Of the Great Salt Lake. With word of the White Legs 
such numbers reached the Aeon's tribe, war was declared. And by year's end, the White Legs had been wiped out. The souls fought beside Joshua Graham and the dead horses, eradicating the threat the White Legs posed to Zion. When the courier and Joshua Graham spelled salt upon moon, their victory was celebrated with a great feast. The Sorrow's transformation from a peaceful, timid tribe into a proud and warlike people broke Daniel's heart. He tried to take solace in the knowledge that they would remain in Zion, but it was a small comfort. The Sorrow's innocence was lost. Having helped eradicate the White Legs from Zion, the Dead Horses returned to Dead Horse Point in triumph. They remained neutral toward the Sorrows, but as years went on, there were periods of competitive friction, even violence between the tribes. The new Canaanites, Daniel especially, intervened regularly as mediators, but found it difficult to reconcile the tribes' conflicts. The defeat of the White Legs in Zion marked a turning point in the fortunes of the Happy Trails Caravan Company. Oh right, wasn't that whole thing? The caravan met with the new Canaanites in Zion Valley to trade. Happy Trails soon returned to prosperity. The vigilance of the Sorrows and Dead Horses in defending southwestern Utah, initially stumbling to Happy Trails caravans, soon proved a blessing. The tribes united against the Aeons, driving them back from Highway 50, and thus opening yet another trading route for Happy Trails caravans. Follows Chalk took the courier's words to heart and decided that he would behold the sights and sounds of distant lands with his own eyes and ears. After returning to Dead Horse Point, he quarreled with his family and other tribe members about his ambitions. One morning, they awoke to discover that Follows Chalk had set off alone, westward, into the wilderness. He was never seen again. Weeping Cloud was distraught when she learned of her husband's death, but took comfort from her tribe and the compassion of the new Canaanites. She forgave Daniel for having concealed her husband's fate from her and learned to accept his fate. When her grief faded, she took a husband from the dead horse tribe. <laughs> At her bidding, he stayed close to home. Though the courier had stopped Joshua Graham from executing the salt upon me, the war chief still fell in battle. The White Legs defeated at Three Marys. Joshua led the Sorrows and Dead Horses in tending to their comrades and burning the corpses of their foes. He continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan and showed little quarter to those he fought. And yet it has changed. He no longer reveled in the brutality and cruelty no. for which he had been known in his former life. His inner demons, if not extinguished, were at the least appeased. For years after the defeat of the White Legs, Daniel did his best to minister to the Sorrow's spiritual needs. Try as he might, he could not hold back the tribe's increasing militancy and reverence in Joshua Graham. Demoralized, he returned to his family and Dead Horse Point. His failures haunted him for the rest of his days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland. Go ahead and turn it back up now. And the courier? Well, he had some more things to get to. Oh, they just give it to me. Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay. This one looks a little racist for me to wear, I'll admit. That's a pretty nice hat, I'll say. That's pretty clean. This one is dope. I'm not so sure about that. That looks pretty solid. How much am I carrying? I'm carrying almost 800 pounds. But we've got a light shining in darkness. Uh-huh. Can't take this off, huh? Well. 
Let's plug these things in here. Because that's going to be a uh, go-to weapon for a little bit. All right. So yeah, that's um, that's Honest Hearts, everyone. As for the courier, he had more stories to go. All right. <laughs> well, ain't that a kick in the head? Um, so yeah, ultimately I feel like the, uh, the sorrows could have been handled a bit more. Not necessarily good or bad, just, oh, hell yeah. I feel like they could have been treated with a little more reverence. They're almost considered to be like orcs, but like they are a people just like everyone else in this DLC is meant to be. Um, and I really feel like that isn't appreciated for them. It's something that I wish uh, could be, oh my God, all my stuff in here is still in here, right? <laughs> is that, that's 800 pounds. I am over encumbered. All right. Well. So yes, as I was saying, I would like to see, um, I would have liked to have seen the uh, white legs be respected a little more because they're treated almost the way that one would treat like an orc, which is a little sus considering that, you know, they're a tribe of people. Um... The boss fight against Salt Upon Wounds is really unimpressive considering it's Salt Upon Wounds and like he's not fantastic and it's like two other guys. Maybe three. And it's two, it's two against one but it's really two against four because Joshua Graham's there. But do you see why Joshua Graham being on one side of that fight is difficult? Of course, if you try to talk Graham down from that and you consider speech checks a boss fight, then it's a little more significant of a threat. But yeah, all in all, um, it's not bad. It's not great, though. It's just it's just all right. You know, it's pretty good. Uh, the only thing outstanding about it is exploration of tribals. And... Uh, Exploration of tribals and getting to see stuff like, where should I go? Oh, well, I'll just keep walking. Um, yeah, the only really standout things about the DLC are the tribals and Joshua Graham. But, you know, it's not bad. had enough she asks um yeah i'm thinking that these guys are probably balanced for a courier who didn't just finish the dlc here's your weak link this is earth anyway uh, i've been alfred this has been honest hearts and yes i really am gonna slug my fat ass all the way home. Seriously. Uh, thanks for sitting through all that with me. I'm probably even going to have more than one DLC that I finished while over encumbered, considering the end of Dead Money. But yeah, um, I'm going to play the other DLCs at some point. I don't know when. But sometime. I hope to see you guys then. Uh, thanks for hanging out for this short little mini LP. And I will see you guys later. Bye.